Hi everyone, I'm Jorge Perez and this is Utan Shaolin Kung Fu. Today I'm interviewing one of the members of Utan Alaska, but he also founded Utan Australia. So if you want to know more about Kevin Wall, stay with me and let's get into it. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm here today with Kevin Wall. Kevin Wall began training in Utan, Alaska on their Master Wong 35 years ago. He became one of his first group of disciples in 2000. Kevin and his wife Emily moved to Australia in 2006 and founded Australia Utan. And finally, he moved back to Alaska in 2017. So let's welcome Kevin Wall here. Hi, Kevin. How are you doing? I'm good, Jorge. Thank you for uh, having me here. Thank you. No, th thank you for you know being part of this uh, new project that I came up with. Um, I'm sure you've you've seen some of the interviews before, but uh, the goal of this channel is to promote and preserve our you know loved. Chinese traditional martial arts and and know each other right it's a it's a big family and there are a lot of interesting personalities including you okay <laughs> and I'm right. glad that you accepted uh, the invitation and you know I encourage everyone to to do that right so we can know each other and share our knowledge about this family so let me ask you, Kevin. Um, can you can you tell us about yourself a little bit? And you know, I think you were born in in, in U.S. or Alaska. So I don't know if you can clarify that. And and you know, where are you located right now? Uh, all right. Um, I, I was born in Illinois, moved to South Dakota for a couple of years as a young child, but then came to Alaska in 1980 as the eight year old, I believe it was. Okay. And so. I, I, mo I pretty much consider myself Alaskan grown. Um, I, uh, I did a, a little bit of a, I, I like to call it fake Shaolin Kung Fu with a guy for up when I was 12. Um, okay. He, he, I didn't know anything. So my ignorance really took over. Uh, he called himself a Shaolin priest. But it didn't really occur to me that there was a problem that he had a wife and daughter and ate pepperoni pizza. Okay. <laughs> you know? <laughs> All right. So, you know, those should have been some pretty big warning signs. But as a 12-year-old, what do I know, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> right? But uh, anyway, I got out of that, which is good. Um, but I, I... I'm I, glad you did. <laughs> oh, yeah, right? Um, I... I uh, I met Master Master Wong because I took a Tai Chi class at the university, and he was the teacher of the teacher whose name was Gloria Smith, really lovely lady. And uh, he came in, talked about Tai Chi. That was cool. And then he did a short demonstration of uh, Feng Bu. Okay, you know? I love that form. And and, <laughs> and, and I'd never uh, seen it before, right? Yeah. So I didn't really know where I was supposed to stand to watch. So instead of standing, you know, over here while he goes back and forth, yeah. I just happened to to stand over here. Oh my god! So he comes like flying at me, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa! And I jump back into the wall. You know, he of course he stopped like six, seven feet away from me, but yeah. you know, <laughs> I was like, whoa! He's coming at me. Yeah. You know, so I was like, okay, I've got to learn that too. Um, so then I started going to his uh, classes, which were at the time at a. Uh, um, a rec center and uh we did what i consider pretty hardcore training um you know we do half an hour plus of, of stances and stances meant you know your your thighs were parallel to the ground they don't there's none of this stuff going on mm -hmm. you know 90 and, uh, degrees right well yeah not yet well no even low you know i mean i'm, I'm sorry i want to yeah. show you sorry but yeah so if you have a staff on your legs it's not going to roll off yeah yeah and uh and then you do like 50 to 100 Mabu jumps 
you know, and that was the beginning of class, you know, so, yeah. you know, you just be dead. Um, I, I loved it. And um, then he fought, he moved to a, a school over uh, in another part of town where he actually got his own space. And I came with him there. I, I was off and on a little bit when I was first with him because of, you know, money issues, really. Um, but uh, he kept calling me up and telling, asking me, you know, where are you? You know, yeah. I'm at home. I've got no money. What do you want? He said, you come back right now. It's okay. Yeah. I'll be there. So I, I showed up and uh, I just helped him out a lot to um, kind of pay my way, so to speak. Um, yeah, with him for a while. And uh, we had, you know, he, we, he'd lost a lot of students because they couldn't handle that kind of training. He was know? too tough. Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, I happened to, for whatever reason, you know, take to it because it just suited what I needed at the time in my life, I guess. But, uh, yeah, it was pretty harsh. And, um, I mean, not as bad as, like, I'm sure Master Sue went through or anything like that, right? I'm not trying to compare myself to the old guys. Yeah. But for me in my life, it was pretty harsh. And uh, I, I really uh, appreciated that because he always was right. If mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, yeah. Um, I, I I have a problem with people tell me what to do when they don't know what they're doing. Yeah, but he knew what he was doing, you yeah. know. And so I just shut up and listen. Yes, sir. No, sir. What what do I need to do next, sir? You know. Um, you know, and I don't think I treated anybody else like him. I still haven't because he's just a very special person in my life. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah. So you started right away with master. Um, After Wong, yeah. Within Wong, like, when you about were months or three months, yeah. about how old were you? After that Shaolin 16. thing? I got 12 years old for the Shaolin yeah. BS, 16 for the real Kung Fu. Oh, okay, perfect. You were 16 when you started with Master Wong. Perfect. Yeah. And uh, well, look, Shaolin's awesome, but that guy wasn't, just to clarify. Yeah. Okay. No, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Just so and, we don't, don't uh, make, make a mistake in how I speak. And also, so you started with Master Wong at 16, and the only previous kind of martial arts experience that you had was this Shaolin class for a couple of years. I yeah, guess. he did Wing Chun, and, and the funny thing was the guy was actually, his Wing Chun was actually pretty good, but, but you know, he's a liar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it kind of doesn't really matter, you know? Um, but you know, I always wondered why he lied. Yeah, I saw that one because it's such a weird thing. Yeah, so, sometimes yeah, sometimes it's all about the money, right? Sometimes. I guess it was very strange. I it, it, I'd be like three hours of just of story time if I yeah. was to go into that, which we don't need to because it doesn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, Kevin, can you can you please tell us, um, you know, something about Master Wong and also the line of succession? Who was um, who was the master of Master Wong per se, and he and he's a disciple as well. So, can you can you explain a little bit the that line of succession there, and also how did you became a uh, part of the Wu Tang family? Wow. Okay. Um. So I'm I'm gonna be careful speaking about my sifu because uh, I love the guy. Um. He's very close to me. Um, I met him like I said, when I was 16. He's very intense, um, very direct, very honest. The uh, the thing with him that's the, I guess the highest quality is is his uh, um, continuous effort to be a better person. Um, you know, he'll, he'll catch himself, you know, so I'll, he'll get upset with something, this or that, rah, 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 you know, cause yeah. you know, life is, and then you're like, wait a minute, you know, maybe I don't need to be like that, you yeah. know, and, uh, yeah, I need that. <laughs> you know? So, um, you know, I think, I think he's a pretty amazing guy. I'm Kung Fu wise. He's, I, I think he's just awesome. I mean, he's my teacher, so I'm very biased, obviously. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, um, very very dense and intense jing um 
very wide open and uh, not quite wild, but spirit. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, I, I love watching my teacher do. So he's kind of a role model. Oh, absolutely. Like, not only as a martial artist and as a shifu, as a master, right? But also kind of personal wise as, as well. Being, yeah. As a human being, exactly. Yeah. Um, for sure. So, and who's who's his master? Because I I understand. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. This gets confusing. So I I we did a quick um, side. He just gave an interview to my wife on our school newsletter, and it talks. The last couple of interviews have talked a little bit about this question. So I'll give you my thoughts. But if you really want to know, you can double check those newsletters. Yep. Um, but uh, basically, it gets a little complicated. Uh, he he basically started with Master Sue, and Master Sue would be his, would be his simple. If you had to call one person his simple, that's Master Sue. Okay. You know, and Master Sue is the one who got him to take discipleship. So that's Master Sue. Yeah. Um, and where was that, Kevin? Stuff. That was in Taiwan. Oh, okay, but got yeah, it. yeah, way back when. Um, and I, like, I think you heard mention something to Paolo. Um, he's definitely my sibling was definitely a Tang generation, but he is of the group of Tang generation guys who learned as well from Grandmaster Liu. So that's like Master Tony Young. Um, Master Jason So, Master John Hum, and no few more masters. I can't remember all their names. <laughs> yep. No worries. <laughs> but uh, but um, you know, there's there's a number of those guys who, you know, often are technically Master Sue's disciples or or one of the other gentlemen's disciples, but also in fact learn some some stuff directly from Great Master Leo. Um, and Master Sifu is one of those guys. Okay. So, but uh, yeah, um, but yeah, he's definitely solid tank generation he would say yeah um but uh he uh so he mostly his praying mantis he got from master Sue, but he went to the uh summer camps you may have heard about the summer camps that they had in taiwan back in, in when they were all younger um they were like 30 day camps that had trained um, 10 to 12 hours every day um master master uh Xu or master, or master sue or some of that should say apparently master Dai would um be kind of running things or, or maybe showing stuff. Oh, I didn't and know they, about those camps. Okay. Oh my God. That's no, they, 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 they all, the, the, the guys I just mentioned for sure went to these things. I don't know about who else did it, yeah. but my sequel did and master young cert certainly did master. So certainly did. Um, I, and I 99% certain that master hum certainly did. <laughs> um, I just don't know him as well. Yeah. So, um, um, but, uh, yeah, they, they went through that, and so they got um, really intensive training from a number of the Wu-Tang masters, uh, especially Masters Adam Xu and Master Su, but a number of the other gentlemen would, would pop in and out and do whatever. I'm not, I don't have a tally on who. But, and they yeah. used to learn like different kind of uh, styles during these summer camps? Yeah, the summer camp would be, um, if I understand correctly, Primarily focusing on Baji because that was Grandmaster Liu's summer camp. Yep. If you see what I'm saying. But I think they did a bunch of other stuff too with the different uh, teachers teaching. Like Master Sue is a te master of so many praying mantis styles. Yeah. I'm 90% gonna I wasn't there, but I'm pretty sure he was teaching mantis for part of the day, and then Madam Master Adam Shu was also teaching mantis sometimes. And um so yeah, my understanding is that they, they got a lot out of a lot of them, if you know what I'm saying. Okay. Um from, from those from those gentlemen um but his direct sip with the gentleman he took discipleship through would be master sue okay and yeah and they have a really good relationship or had a really good relationship so okay and then you became a disciple of master wong as well yeah and that um it's actually it was funny because i i heard Paolo tell the story last last uh, i mean last interview and um see before Paolo came to the school Two different times, Master Wong had brought up to some of us the idea of becoming disciples. Okay. All right. And both times, I was like, "Yes, sir." Yep. <laughs> All I, four. I mean, I'm here. yeah. What do I need to do? Yeah. Where do I sign up? Yeah. You know, whatever. And um, and both those times, uh, I, I don't want to mention his name because I'm mad at him. I won't lie. My 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 at the time older kung fu brother, who's no longer with Wu Tang. Um, both times he didn't feel comfortable taking discipleship from 
Grandmaster Liu because he'd never met him or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so frustrated with that. So, and he was the senior guy. So I think it really upset my teacher. He didn't tell me, I don't know why, but it, I'm assuming it made him unhappy, Yeah, you know? <laughs> so, um, but then, you know, then Paolo showed up and we had it when Paolo was there, we had Paolo and Jacob and Aaron and Byron, a whole bunch of gentlemen who were all really, you know, into Kung Fu. And so it's a really kind of perfect time. My wife, I'm sorry as well, um, Emily. And uh, oh, she became a disciple yeah. as well in your group. Yeah, she, she's one of the, yeah, she's, she's um, the only person who's been there longer than her is me. Oh, okay. Yeah. She, she's been with him for 30 years. Got it. No, 33 years. I'm sorry. 30, 32. See, excuse me. She's three years oh. after me. Okay. So 32 years. Yeah. So yeah, she, she's definitely in there, which makes my life a lot easier Absolutely. <laughs> as far as training goes, you know. And then that was in, in the 2000, I think, when you yes, guys sir. became a disciple. And that was the first group. Probably. Yeah. But like I said, though, see, he had, um, he had taught me and one of the other guys, Baji, like five years before the Shao Baji. Before becoming a disciple. Yeah. He started Baji. But because, be, but, but because he was planning on making us disciples. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And then the other guy ruined it all. Okay. And then he said, don't worry about that anymore. So I trained at home, you know, my Shabaji all the time, you know, until finally four years later, he's like, oh, well, you probably don't remember it. You probably don't remember it, but uh, I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, I was so happy to finally get to practice it in the open again. So it was me. Awesome. And then how many, I think you were 10. Not nine, there right? There were 10 of us, yeah. 10, the first group, and Paolo was part of that group as well. Yes, sir. And your other siblings, okay. Yeah, I, I, if I could say something about that group, because I'm really proud of this, yep. is uh, out of that group, there's 10 of them. Byron, Paolo, and Jacob were all my students at one point. Oh, nice. So okay. I was very... Yeah. I feel really good about that. Yeah. And they all became sippos in the first group of sippos. So. Yeah. That yeah. yeah, that happens. Um I I remember training and learning from my older brothers uh when I became a disciple because we were part of the first group of my uh shifu. Uh awesome. and that happened as well. And and I have very good memories about it. That's really neat. Yeah. So Kevin, can you please talk about your curriculum and, you know, the different styles that you know that are part of the Wu-Tang lineage? So everybody know what, you know, has been taught there in as part of the Wu-Tang Alaska curriculum. All right. There's a lot. I'm going to just jump into praying minutes really quick because we were just talking about that a second ago. Um, so my Sifu Master Wong was very close to Master Xu in Taiwan and um, learned a lot of praying mantis from him. At that time, Master Xu was going through and teaching forms and bits from all the different styles that he knew. So my Sipu didn't say learn all of Babu or all of Seven Star, or he learned a bunch of stuff from a bunch of form, a bunch of stuff. Um, cause that's just how Master Su taught him. He showed him a bit of everything. Okay. Right. And, and later on, Master Su was very consistent of showing whole styles to everybody. But when, when he was with my Sipu, he, he taught him a lot of everything. So, um, our school has Bongbu and Xiaohu Yan and, um, Zai Kui, you know, it's got the, the long fist mantis from, um, yeah, not way Xiao Tang that same step, but, uh, Song Wang Ting, yeah. Um, and uh, he has six harmony from um, that we got through Master Su. Um, and then he has a lot of seven star in Mei Hua, uh, a little bit of Mi Men. Uh, yeah, so a little bit of all that, um, but there's, it's not any one of the complete things by itself. So at our school, it's gonna, you're gonna go through a, a variety of them uh, if, if, so if you're gonna really go through everything we've got. A lot of forms right. from those styles, but not the entire system, I guess, right? For each style. 
Yeah, no, yeah, we have like a beginning and advanced forms for a few styles and then some okay. intermediate forms. Like in the, uh, well, we have a pretty full set for eight step, honestly, for Babu. Yeah. Um, but, uh, um, and I think that makes sense because uh, if I kind of remember correctly, uh, Master Su Yu Chang was like very, I don't want to say very, because he was very good at everything. But he was uh, focused a lot on Papu talent trend, right? So maybe that's why. Yeah, maybe. But um, what I personally learned from Master Su was uh, Mi Me Lanche. Okay. And that was awesome. Sorry, I had to throw that in there because I just yep. thought it was a great experience. Absolutely. Life, so, um, yeah, Master Su is right in front of me. My people, Master Arm is reviewing it right next to me. Yeah. Best best seat in the house, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, no, then at the school then we do a little bit of singing. My wife's actually teaching that at the moment for the most part. Um and uh we do uh Baji Piqua, obviously, Bagua, um Tai Chi Chen and Yang. My specialty personally would be Chen of the two. Out of all of them, I actually see my personal thing would be Piqua. Um You like it? I love Piqua. Mm -hmm. yeah, I love Baji and Piqua. I love them all, honestly. But um, yeah, Piqua is, is is where it's at for me. So okay, um, yeah, I, I love it. Um, but uh, the the main people, main thing people learn at our school, you know, we have you know older people, of course, coming for the Tai Chi and Qigong and stuff. Um, but we get a lot of people doing uh, the the Baji Piqua and the Bagua, um, which is fun. But like uh, I think Paolo mentioned, when we started, you couldn't learn Baji unless you were a disciple. A few years back, my teacher changed his policy, so now we're teaching Baji more openly, and that's that's different, you know. It's, and do yeah. you do you teach Baji before learning some of the Tanlan Tran forms or some other styles? You can we teach each we teach um, see we 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 it's in a sense we do each one separately in of itself. Um, So if you want to learn pray minutes, we can just teach you pray minutes. You know, if you want to learn uh, the Baji, we can just go with Baji. Um, it used to be that again, like you had to have been there for a while, which means you would have learned something else before you get to learn Baji. But okay. these days, we've let people come in and just start. Okay. Um, which is actually kind of fun. So <laughs> interesting to me. Yeah, that's um, I I've mentioned it before, right? That that's something different because the way it was taught before originally was you first of all you had to be a disciple in in you know in general yeah i do and yeah. then, you know obviously in order to become a disciple you should be pretty good at you know or advanced an advanced student right and then after that is that you kind of start learning pachi and and piqua and all these styles right Well, I mean, that, that is one way of doing it. And uh, I think that's pretty common. But uh, honestly, um, for me, like I've, some of my disciples were distinctly older than I am and not likely to outlive me, Yeah, you know? Um, and to me, it's, it, it's helping, you know, you, we have a couple goals, I guess. One is carry on the lineage Another one is get better ourselves. And then the other one is help anybody we can get as well as good as they can while we're on our own walking around. So, you know, with, with my, my older disciples, I'm not going to worry about how well they can smash somebody um, where I might, my disciples 20 years old because they, yeah. they, they want to have power. Um, I just worry more about is this helping them have a better life and get stronger and better energy? Um, And if it is, I'm happy with it. And as far as the who's going to be a disciple, I'd rather someone with less talent but a greater affinity and respect than someone with more talent and less affinity or respect. Yeah. You know, like uh, I don't know how 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 well he's got people. I I have definitely have a uh, not all disciples stick around. Yeah. You know, that's something that happens a lot, a lot too. They they just disappear into the wind. Um, And so I'd, I'd rather have the guys who stick around, 
you know, whatever their fitness level or skill level may be. I don't, she don't really care so long as they're there and trying their best. That That's what I really care about. So, yeah. Yeah. Kevin, I, I always like to ask, what is a concept that you have of a master or shifu? Um, and also, if you can kind of talk about it from a disciple perspective and also as a shifu perspective, right? Because you have disciples in, and we're going to talk about that later. But uh, as far as a, th that concept and what do you think are, you know, a master should have, you know? Wow. Um, yeah, that, that's a, a deep question. Um, so I, I think one of the problems that with answering it is I, like I mentioned the affinity thing earlier. Um, I'm a pretty intense guy, especially when I was a young man, and my sipu was the right sipu for me. I'm fairly certain that I would not have been as well cultivated yeah. in many other schools, even with the great sipu in the other school. You know, nothing, nothing to diminish the other sipu, just if I didn't have that connection with them, it really doesn't matter how good he is, you know, and, and you get, you've got to be able to, you know, have a bond with your teacher of some sort. Um, so, you know, in general, obviously, when we think of a master, you think of someone with skill. Um, I, I, I would throw in, you know, dedication as far as to the art itself and to sharing the art um, and to just continually trying to get better. Um, you know, you'd have to have all those qualities for sure. And then, to be my master, you have to somehow, some way, deal with me. You know, I don't, I have no know how my sifu manages it. I don't know how Master Obama puts up with me, but he he does. He somehow gets through, you know, having me in his life, and and I'm still here learning more kung fu thanks to that. So um, whatever skill he has that does that for him is what my master needs. And I'm pretty sure that you know most sifu out there have at least one suit. He's a bit of a trial for them. Um, so they need patience, I guess, you know, mm -hmm. um, and love um, for their art and for the idea of carrying on the art. Um, yeah, and as far as me being a sip of my disciples, um, uh, it, a few weeks ago at the school here, we had a um, potluck and someone asked me, you know, so what does it mean that you're a sifu or that you're a master? And I said, I have no idea, you know. I'm, I'm working on that, um, you know, but I'm trying really hard to get as good as I can. I'm trying really hard to, to share as well as I can. I'm trying really hard to, you know, improve who I am at the same time. Yeah. Um, that's all I can really do. <laughs> how, how far I've gotten on any of those is kind of questionable sometimes, you know, I, I have my good days and bad days, but, um, yeah, uh, I, I, I just doing my best because I think all I can ask anybody else to do is um, I know my Kung Fu. I, I'm good at teaching it and um, correcting people. So that's probably helpful to my students. But uh, once again, without the affinity, who cares what I know or how I can teach it? You know, it just doesn't matter. Yeah. So. And one of the things that I've been trying to do um now that I'm transitioning from, you know, competing into retire or retirement, right? It's trying to learn more about the history of our styles and and the Wu-Tan lineage and all that. Do you do you think that's kind of important as well? Um, as, you know, yeah. to be a master, right? Because, I mean, choreographies and all that and you, you can learn that but yeah well no so i i okay that you actually asked a couple questions in there it's pretty deep um so first if you don't mind before i forget i want to mention that my sifu also definitely learned from master adam shu got some good help from his kung fu brother master young and i believe from master so and I know his kung fu brother, Master Lu, came and helped him with a lot of stuff. So I want to make sure I put that out there because those are very important awesome. people. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah. So sorry to all of those guys for forgetting <laughs> to say them earlier. Um, 
but uh, yeah, I, I think lineage is really important personally. Um, I think it's one of the most important parts of, of traditional martial arts. Um, I, uh, you know, my, my teacher is, is very, you know, sincere about it. And I, I try to be as well. Um, I, I think that the, the, the master disciple relationship is, is, is vital. Um, I, um, as far as the choreography versus, um, deeper stuff, you know, I've tried to explain this to somebody at one point from my, the way I uh, learned and understand Kung Fu is each style and then Kung Fu in general, both have or are representative of a way. And by that, I mean, not a bunch of what's a bunch of what's like, I have a right punch, a left hook hand, a right elbow strike, a left foot kick, you know, that's a bunch of what, a bunch of simple things. But every style didn't start by any masters in the back and the old days trying to think, okay, will I or won't I punch? I think I will add it. But no, they were just out there fighting and living and, and apparently not dying because they had time to make a style, mm -hmm. you know? And they had a way of fighting. I'm going to entire Chi the way I'm going to connect with and accept and redirect whatever comes at me. In Baji, I'm going to, I'm going to diffuse and explode. Yeah. Whatever's coming in, boom, boom, you know? And, you know, each style has its own way, if you see what I'm saying. And the forms are, are not supposed to be the, the end of it. The forms are just supposed to be this little tiny doorway that you walk through to where you can start figuring out what that way actually is and start encompassing it and embodying it and then be able to express it. And then you theoretically actually have a style. Um, otherwise, you, you know, you, you're good, maybe, you may be very athletic and maybe a good fighter, but do you actually have the art yet? Probably not. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Um, doesn't mean you can't kick my butt, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But 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 does mean that you don't necessarily have the art, you know. Um, so uh, that's that's how, kind of how I look at it. Um, and I think that uh, I, I I think it's vital that we kind of stick to some of the old ways too um, a lot. I'm I'm very much old school in my thinking because there's been you know especially with the MMA there's been more and more tendency towards mixing and matching styles. And I know it's silly for me to say this since I do, you know, Baji, Pico, you know, blah, 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 all these different things, but they're all of, of a kind, you know, there, there's, there's, there's a very wholeness and sameness between Piqua and Tai Chi and Praying Mantis and, and, and Shingi. And, but so the, there's some very deep sameness, yep. you know, very, as opposed to some of the other styles we could talk about. And I'm fairly certain I'm not as good as any of the old masters. In fact, I know it. Um, and I, I think I'd better spend my time trying to actually master what I've been taught to that higher level of proficiency, skill, and, and understanding than to just kind of keep mixing and matching, getting pretty good at this and pretty good at that, putting them all together and having a kind of a backpack full of things to hit you with, so to speak. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, I'm, I'm more, yeah. And just if I could say one more thing in there, the only reason I know so many styles is because my teacher made me. Um, he, 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 he told us all we should focus on one style. He went out and poked at everybody, said, you should do this, you should do that, you should do the other. And I said, you know, what about me? Yeah. He said, oh, you got to do it all because you're going to teach. So, so that was he, a little unfair. He already thought, had was, a plan for you, Kevin. Yeah, he did. But I was, it was both a compliment and, and a kick in the butt at the same time. You know, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't get to focus on something. That's not fair. Yeah. You know? but, uh, but okay. It's, you know, it's a nice thing to say to me, I guess, yeah. Kevin, can you please talk about Utan Alaska? And I would like to know how how is a training day day there, um, and how many students do you have, and how do you break down the training? Do you have an adult class? Do you have a Pachi class? Do you have a Piqua class? Or you can explain us a little bit about it. Sure. Um, Okay, it's it's a little bit broken up. So each we have a few different instructors at the school right now. I'm I'm like I'd be called like the head of curriculum or whatever as I'm the senior instructor. But uh, for instance, Sifu Crystal she teaches Long Fist, um, and she does her class in a pretty intense way. You know the good old fashioned stances, punches, kicks, and you know then get right into it on the Tantwe. And, and then Miao Dao. Um, 
the uh, praying mantis classes that we do are mostly taught by Sipu Derek, though I kind of oversee that. That's a separate and class, right? Separate class. And that one's actually pretty small right now, which is kind of sad, but uh, um, that one is mostly being run by Sipu Derek. And kind of the same thing, you do stances, basic training, uh, and then get into it on forms and hopefully applications, depending on who's there, you know. Um, then uh, the Tai Chi class is very similar. The, the only one that's kind of a little bit off of that track would be the, the Baji Piqua class. Um, as I, I, I kind of made a deal with my Sifu um, when, when he told me that we were going to start teaching um, Baji, you know, to non-disciples. I was like, and you want me to do the class? I'm like, you know, that was kind of frustrating for me, as you might imagine. Yeah. Um, but I was okay. But did that mean I can do it my way? And he said, sure. So anybody come to my our Baji class, you're gonna do a couple of years of 100 steps and 100 kicks every time you show up at class. Uh, everybody in the class does an eight breath shao Baji to start the class, um, and then we split up. So everybody does shao Baji with the eight breaths. Then those guys, well, the brand new guys will start doing the steps and the kicks over there. We have some people who've been there for like 20 something years. And so they're working on like Leo Dakai or, 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 or something like that. Other people are a little more new. So they're working on Jing on Bashir or, or whatever. Um, we also have a bunch of interesting uh, material, largely thanks to Master Su um, and Master Lu related to basics of uh, the people on the Baji. So we do a lot of uh, this basic Baji strikes and stuff yeah. and, and you know, kicks, punches, um, steps, you know, knees, hips, shoulders, head, you know, get into all that. Um, so try to suffer a lot, you know, um, make it make it as, as much like the good old days as I can get away with. If yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I don't I don't get to yell at them. You know, I don't get to yell at them, and I don't get to. Yeah. So he yelled at me, but I don't get to yell at them. It's just not fair, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, he seems to be very, my my has become much more calm and easygoing over the years. So. Yeah. I'm trying to follow that. And then you do, um, do you do fighting applications? Uh, you know, based yeah. on the... it depends on who's there, though, because it, it all depends on who you're working with. Uh, I, I think you know. I mean, I'm, when I'm teaching a bunch of little old ladies, interestingly enough, the little old ladies often want to know about and see the applications. Okay. They don't necessarily want to do them as much, but they definitely more than you'd expect. You know, little old ladies, if you teach them Tai Chi. They all want to know what it's about. So that's actually kind of fun. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, it really just depends. Like when I had uh, Paolo and, and Jacob in my class, we did lots and lots of applications because um, they were of of the, the mindset and the fitness level yeah. and the energy to do it with. Um, a master so really one taught them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that that was my class at that particular time, though. Um, the uh but i mean going on is what i mean is that you learned that from master Wong, right all the yeah, applications yeah, yeah. And... yeah well see yeah he used to um like, like, like he used to bounce me off the pavement you know um and this is kind of hard this will be here i mean it's a, a weird thing uh in, in my opinion and this is what i get from my sifu there, there's some things in kung fu specifically that are really hard to transmit without touching the person. Yeah. You know, certain you try to explain a certain energy or jing to your student. You know, you can talk till your face is blue. You can even stand there in front of them and do it a thousand times in one. And they still, even if they're smart, might not get it. Yeah. You just kind of touch and boom. Oh, I, I get it. You know? Yeah. Um, so he taught me a lot through touch, if that makes sense. He, 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 I was his main dummy, so to speak, for, for many, many years. Okay. So I've I, he's issued a lot of power through me, if that makes any sense. Which is so very I learned helpful. A lot of, what? Sorry? Which is very helpful because that will help you to understand the techniques and then obviously to teach them later. Exactly. I, the, the thing is, I got, I was really lucky that one thing I was very good at right off the bat was, um, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but there's a name for it. Um, in bodies of the interpreters of how to take a hit <laughs> um, and, uh, and and how to accept and receive and diffuse energy. So even though I couldn't actually stand there and take it, I could 
you know, diminish it pretty well. So he, he got more and more comfortable, like I said, over the years. First, he wanted me to wear pads. I said, pads are just going to get me hurt, Zippo, because, you know, they have edges, you know. Yeah. And, and finally, he, so he knocked me down a little bit. Then I was fine. So he knocked me down a little bit harder. I was fine. So he, he started just, yeah. pretty soon, he was just, ah, boom, ah, you know. Yeah. And that was great. I learned a lot from just getting bounced off the ground. It really, really helps, um, like I said. So you guys basically break down the classes per style, right? Because you yeah, have most, the Tan Lan, the most it, it, yeah. Tan Lan Chuan Sorry. class, Tai Chi Chuan class, separate. Then you have a Pachi, Pachi and Piqua class, same? Yeah, Pachi and Piqua. Pachi and Piqua, and then Xin Yi? Yeah, we have a, an off and on Xin Yi class. It goes like for a few weeks at a time and then stops and it goes for a few weeks at a time. Okay. Yeah, you know, but... Uh, yeah, we do all those at least a little bit. And long fist. There's also a long fist, and I mentioned that I guess earlier. But uh, okay. And during fun. during the class, uh, for example, if you're under Apache class, you can do those fighting applications within the class. It's it's part of the class, right? Well, again, just depends on who's in the class. And yes, ideally, I personally like to, and I do a lot of those. Okay. Um, but uh, often. The goal, how to put it, okay, my teacher, um, people, he, some of his students used to bug him, why aren't we doing more sparring in class? And he'd always made it clear to me that he kind of expected me to spar a lot on my own. Okay. Right? So, you know, I haven't gotten into a lot of real fights because I'm a pretty nice guy, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but I've sparred dozens and dozens of people from dozens of styles. And, you know, anywhere from just light tap to, to full contact, to, except for, you know, you know, what, and, uh, yep. you know, <laughs> right. Um, and Kung Fu works, you know, it works. Yep. Um, I've, I've, uh, the last person I sparred was just uh, like well, some years ago now, because I've, I've had, I've been back a little bit. No one sparred me in Alaska, but the last person I sparred was a Jiu Jitsu black belt in Australia and Kung Fu works. Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's uh, you know, it it, it just just does. You just got to basically shut up and follow the principles and and let it happen, and things will go your way. Yeah, you know, it's when you're trying too hard to achieve things mentally. I don't. If you're that fast to think you're good for you, but I, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm a lot more to just going with the right flow and letting them kind of lead me into their own hole. Yeah. So, yeah, that's true, that's especially true. like if you practice those applications like on a daily basis or regularly you become good yes. at good at it you know yes sir all right kevin there's something that really caught my attention when i was reading uh your biography right you you've been part of utan alaska the majority of you know the time i would say and but you also, at some point of your life, you moved to Australia and started Utan Australia. And I would like to know more about it. Like, when did you start Utan Australia? And also, you mentioned before that you has you have some disciples as well. And I would like to talk about it. And, and also, you know, kind of share how was the paisu ceremony for you and, and your disciples that's always kind of interesting to hear how other uh, Uta members uh, do it right sure um okay the uh australia we we my wife uh and i moved there to be near her family who had also just moved there um and I uh, just, just decided to start uh, teaching the school, you know, open the school because my teacher told me it was okay. I, uh, before I left, I got permission from him to, to open a school and, and uh, yeah, he gave me a, he gave me a calligraphy the, and everything. The green so, light. Yeah. Yeah. And I like yeah, and, and, I, and I got my own, own, yeah. Anyway, he gave me some really nice gifts actually when I left. Um, I got a big, big calligraphy from him and uh, some, some other ones. Um, but uh so I started teaching there. Um, the uh, the the um, 
took me a few years before I decided to go with any disciples, but I had a group of really good guys that I felt really good about. And I was going to be able to um, invite my teacher down to Australia. So I put it together and I invited him down and had him help me do a discipleship ceremony with, with them. So that was really cool. Um, and I'll just, uh, I'm going to jump back real quick about my own. I actually personally did the discipleship ceremony twice, uh, as well as a number of other people in uh, Alaska Wu-Tang, because when we first did it with Paolo, uh, it was Master Liu Changhui, had come from uh, Taiwan and was our witness master. You know, you got your teacher and then the, the other, you know, yeah. he, was, he was the other the other guy. The witness. Um, and, uh, but then Master Su visited us just a couple of years later, a few years later, and he insisted that we that we do it again. And he brought out his his entire family of masters that he has. And so this time when we took discipleship, those of us who were there, um, we didn't just take it straight. Wu Tang also did it, you know, Master Song from Sungi from Xingyi, Master, you know, Wei Shao Tang, all, all these whoever was Master Su's masters besides Grand Master Liu, we got all of them, if you know what I'm saying. And uh and Master Su did a really cool version of the ceremony, and I don't know who, who does it this way or not, but at the very end, after all the you know, the kowtowing and the oath and and you know the, the giving of, of the red envelopes and all that yep. stuff, um he 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 had us uh get in a line, you know, senior to, to junior, and we jump over he had a little flame, we jump over the flame and you get bonk on the head with the sword, right? Okay. And he went, Master Sue went first and did himself. They turn around and my Sifu goes next. And, and that was just really, I, I loved that. That was just, it was cool. You know, and uh, I had a very interesting relationship with Master Sue. I didn't really know him very well. But uh, yeah, I had an interesting relationship with him. And uh, that particular time, um, you know, everybody, he was, uh, he, he would just kind of tap them on the forehead with a sword, you know, tap. Yeah. And I was the, I think that's the third because it was a senior student. He gets to me because, uh huh, stronger. <laughs> yeah, he gave me a whack. Yeah. Um, let me know, like, yeah, you're in, but <laughs> I've got your number, you know. Um, yeah, so he yeah, he was a pretty cool guy. Um, but that was fun. So anyway, in in our, my ceremonies in Australia, I really enjoyed that. So I incorporated the uh, the fire ceremony, the the sword thing. Okay. As well. Yeah, just because I really liked it, you know. Yeah. I mean. And he's someone way more, you know, whatever than me did it. So I, I just follow his lead, you know. Yeah, I mean, like coming from Master Sue, I mean, he has a big right. meaning, you know. He was a master I of your so. master. Um, he was yeah. basically your Qigong. Yeah, for sure. So. Yeah. And and so I had my teacher come. I, I had him visit a, like three times when I was in Australia. I was there for about 10 years. He visited like every other year for a few years there. And I took a few sets of disciples in that time. Um, much like Paolo, I would say I was probably a little too immature to really be a, a proper sipu, okay. you know, for the, especially because just like Paolo, a lot of these guys were my age or older, you know, um, and it's hard for a lot of people if they're older to, you know, have a sipu who's younger than them. That's yeah. just, you know, um, but funnily enough, the the ones that have really stuck with me are mostly older. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so my current classes of Australia students are once a week. I do a Zoom with them, and I just have a few of them, and we just each of them's working on their own thing, and I help them with it. You know, just we just go through some Tai Chi or some Baji or whatever it might be, and then they separately meet. I think twice a week there and there in town. Oh, and then, okay. And they train yeah. together. Yeah, and they train together with, without me there. So. How, how do you? Cool. It, 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 I, yeah, sorry. How do you do? Like, do you do they send you videos as well and see? Hey, yeah, I Shifu, this them. is what we're doing. No, I I just zoom with them and I trust them. I I was with them for a long time, as far as I'm concerned, and um, you know, they've all learned a, a lot of cool stuff and. They again, they're getting older, and one's like 80, one's in the 70s. And you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm just gonna keep helping them get better at what they've got and you know, keep them interested. Any plans of 
visit in Australia? Maybe. Um, pardon me. My uh, my younger daughter actually still lives there. Um, oh, okay. And yeah, and uh, so we might try to go back in a, in a year or so. But right now, the goal this year is to get my that daughter to come to come here. Oh, so, okay, okay. Yeah, and you will do it in the next couple of years. Yeah, it's very hot down there. So. Yeah, I bet it is. What part of Australia it is? I was in Darwin, which is the, the northernmost part, which is in the tropics, and it's very hot and humid and okay, very uncomfortable. And know? it's like that all year, basically, right? Almost. Uh, there's a part of the year that's actually really quite nice um, called the dry season, which is just a few months. And uh, then um, yeah, then you have the buildup, which is horribly humid, but no rain. And then you have the rainy season, which is horribly humid, but you get rain. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, we're talking, um, I don't anybody's ever been in a tropical rainstorm uh, who's listening to this, but it's literally like having a, a, a tub of water dumped on your head every two or three steps you take. Yeah. You, you, you're not wet, you're soaked, yeah. you know? And, and with the humidity, it could be in a cold shower and you're still sweating. Yeah. You know? So Absolutely. That, that's not, yeah. I'm glad I moved back to Alaska. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm sure. So. I'm sure. So, well, Kevin, um, I want to thank you again for your time today. Uh, it was a very interesting conversation. Thank you for sharing all those stories and uh, for being part of this uh, family and continue with this uh, journey and, and legacy, right, that we promised at some point when we became disciples. So thank you very much for joining. I don't know if you want to add a few more words before we finish. Sure, if I could, two quick small things which is just uh, my, my kung fu cousin Kevin Charlin has been really helpful to me with my research stuff that I've been working on and and Vincent May he's technically my kung fu uncle that guy is a gentleman he's a really good guy he's been very helpful to me um, but yeah that's I just want to make sure I mention those guys names because they're, they're really good guys uh, definitely uh, Vincent and you said Kevin as well Kevin, Kevin, Kevin from Charlin, Canada yeah. right yeah, he's a, a disciple of Master Hums, but he also um, is a student of Master So sometimes, I think. Correct. I, I met Kevin, um, I think it was last year. He did a seminar with uh, my cousin, Luis Mendez, here in uh, Massachusetts, of a oh, Six cool. Harmony seminar. And I met him there, nice guy, very talented. And, uh, and Vincent May, I'm actually um, doing the the Paji Su um, training online with him. Oh, very so cool. So he's very that's talented. Cool. I really respect him a lot. And uh, and that's pretty interesting. He's doing a lot of things in order to promote and preserve our lineage. So that's... No, he is. Um, can I, I, I don't know if you can use this, but I would like to say this in, just in case you can't. Um, I got to go with my sifu to Master Su's funeral, um, and that was just really uh, uh, special. And when we were there, we got to represent both Wu Tang and Baji Tang Long in, in in the giving, you know, um, showing respect to him. And it's just that was really cool. Um, Absolutely, uh, it's a really sad reason, sad reason to be there, but uh, yeah. very cool because otherwise, yeah. yeah. So anyway, I, I went to say something about that earlier, but I forgot. So. Well, there we go. Thank you very much again, Kevin. Um, thank you. Glad all right. to have you here, and uh, we'll we'll be in touch. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, right. and uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you. Bye, Hori. Thank you. <laughs>